Ladies and guys who are hanging on to their childhood, Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet, and guy who used to be a child himself. This is the Kill You're in a Loser show. Let's fucking go. I see a lot of you guys and a lot of my coaching clients, a lot of guys on my forums and a lot of people in general who hang on to things that happened to them in childhood and use them as a limiting belief if I'm charitable or if I'm less charitable, an excuse not to pursue their goals or not to achieve things or not to essentially move on and get on with life. So I will reference what I'm actually talking about here. Something Someone left a comment on one of my videos here, and we're going to go balls deep on this because I think it's a greater point or there's some greater points that I want to make about not using your childhood as an excuse about the differentiation between being a child and being an adult and essentially about not being so much of a helpless victim. So I will be nice when I read out this guy's comment because he's going to watch this video and I try and be nice to people, but I am going to give him a fair bit of, you know, a big bit, big dose of reality. And I am to a lot of you. So this guy left this comment on one of my recent videos and said, can you make a video on situations where bigger or stronger men try to alpha up on you and bitch you in front of your woman? How does or should one handle that situation? If you know what I mean, thank you so much. So I replied to this guy and said, has this specifically happened to you or are you asking in theory? Because a lot of the time guys will ask questions based on something they're worried about, but not something that's actually happened. So, you know, I want a bit more context was essentially what I, I did that. So he wrote this long reply, which I'm very, uh, I admire that, that, that you wrote this. I admire writing all this stuff out and it was obviously, you know, challenging to share. So good job. So I'll read it out and I'm going to react to it and make some points as I go. So this guy said, I was in the 10th grade. I was small and weak. There was a guy in my class and he bullied me in the most degrading fashion. We were once outside and he slapped me very hard. I felt so worthless. I was too ashamed to complain to my parents or teachers. I felt too worthless to object to the bullying. Ever since then, I have anxiety and low self-esteem. I'm afraid of life because my bully cast a shadow over my life. I am afraid of him even outside of high school. I am afraid to meet him and I'm afraid that he will bully me again. I am ashamed. I regret that one person had so much power over my life. This is the truth and I cannot change it. I cannot turn back time. I turned 32 next year. I was running from this for the last or the past 17 years. I recently called him on the phone and I told him how I felt. He apologized for everything. I regret that I did not call him sooner. I should have called him 17 years ago when he was bullying me. I cannot turn back time. Due to anxiety, I was unemployed for six years. I'm looking for temporary work for six months. I'm still afraid of confrontations with other men. I feel like I am not valuable enough and I do not have enough, sorry, I do not have a right to protest to the wrong that they might be doing. I still feel I am not valuable enough and I have no right to trust my instincts and to go against the grain, even if others disapprove. I feel if I will go beat up my bully, all of my insecurity will go away. So first of all, respect for sharing all of that and anyone who comments on this video, try and be relatively nice. You guys are pretty nice. You know, respect this guy for sharing all of this. But the first thing I got to say, mate, 17 years, 17 years, you have been a victim. 17 years after this happened, you have told yourself, poor me, this isn't fair. None of my problems are my own doing. Nothing is on me, it's all on this guy. If this guy just hadn't existed or if I'd stood up to him, my entire life would be perfect. I am telling you right now, no, it wouldn't because this bully, this guy that you claim has bullied, and there's a reason that I'm phrasing it like that. This guy that you say has bullied you, bullied you for what? A couple of years in school, I'm assuming. You haven't even said that. You essentially said he bullied you once, but I'm assuming you mean he bullied you for a couple of years. So this guy has bullied you and made you feel like a victim for a couple of years. What have you done since you left school 17 years ago? You have made yourself feel like a victim for 17 years. This guy bullied you for, we're assuming, a couple of years. You've bullied yourself for 17 this guy has made you feel like shit for a couple of years. You have continued to make yourself feel like shit for 17 years. Who's the bigger bully? Who's done the worst harm? You or him? 
And I want you to pause the video and have a little think about this. And I'm saying this not to throw it in your face or to attack you or to be mean to you or anything like that. I'm trying to wake you up and get you to realize something that this guy bullied you for a couple of years and you then spent the next 17 years torturing yourself with it, playing it over and over and over in your mind. Something that happened to you 17 years ago. I bet you can recall it in your head with crystal clarity the moment he slapped you in front of other people. I bet you can just go back into that moment and say, I know exactly what happened. I know how the sun was shining or the clouds and I know who was looking and how it felt and I can remember everything because you have replayed that moment in your mind, I'm assuming every day or a lot of times in the last 17 years. So this guy slapped you in one moment and you've essentially slapped yourself for 17 years afterwards. You have replayed that moment for 17 years. You recorded it in high fucking definition. And every day you wake up and go, let me hit play on that video. Let me keep torturing myself with what a bully did to me 17 years ago. So I would actually say this bully is a nice guy compared to you. This bully is a, this bully is a lovely human being compared to you. Compared to the torture and the pain and the suffering that you have put on yourself for the last 17 years. And... Again, I'm trying to be as gentle with you as I possibly can here, but you need to hear this, right? I believe you need to hear this. You've tortured yourself for 17 years. This guy did jack shit compared to what you have done for 17 years. Again, this guy tortured you for a year or two, however long it was, a couple of years. You tortured yourself for 17 years. And I am saying this to you to get you to realize that you're not a victim here. You have played a very, very, very active part in your own suffering. Now, you haven't known that you've done it. You were innocent in this. And I'm saying that intentionally. You were innocent in your own suffering. You didn't know that you were playing your own, playing a hand in your own suffering. It's not like you sat there and said, let me torture myself for 17 years. No, you didn't want to. I'm sure you would have given anything to be able to take a pill to just forget that this happened and move on. I'm sure. But now that you know that you have a part, and I hope that this message is reaching you, now that you know that you have had a big part in your own suffering, now you're in a beautiful position, a great fucking position, where you can go, shit, man, like, maybe I can start to move past this. Maybe I can start putting in the, or taking the actions that I need to take to start letting go of this and to start moving on from this and to not hold on to something that happened to me 17 years ago when I was 15, when I was a fucking child. And I'm now a fully grown adult, 32 years of age, suffering as if I'm somehow 15. Talk about hanging on to the past. And so I'm saying this to you to empower you, which is something you have not done with yourself. And fair enough, again, you didn't know that you were doing that. You get a pass on this. This isn't me blaming you or saying, you're a pussy, it's all your fault. Like you shouldn't have hung on to the past. You didn't know any better. Now you do know better. I'm sitting here telling you, and God, I would hope you would listen to this message if you don't. That's entirely up to you, but I can't make it any more clear. You have caused your own suffering for the last 17 years. Now, again, not blaming you. You were innocent. You did not know you were doing it. You didn't know any better. You obviously didn't have the tools. Nobody taught you the tools or you didn't find the tools or you didn't luck yourself upon the tools to know how to escape from that. Hey, that's okay. I had a pretty fucking shitty childhood myself. I've talked about it on my website. I have talked about it on my, in my depression video, search my channel for my depression video. It's like a three hour long, basically, you know, biography of my depression and my suicidal thoughts and all the stuff that I went through. I understand deeply. I really deeply understand what it is like to not realize that you have the power to pull yourself out of suffering. I understand that. So if anyone's going to be empathetic with you, it's me. But I also cannot sit here and just say to you, yeah, man, that really sucks. You know, you got bullied. No, you got bullied 17 years ago and you kept up the bullying for 17 years yourself. You have to understand the very first part of moving on from this is you understanding that you had a very, very, very active role in all of this. Maybe not at the time. At the time you were 15, you were a kid, you were bullied, fine, fine, but you have participated in the bullying that has happened in the 17 years since then. You've kept that going. You've reminded yourself of that, I'm assuming, every single day. You have used it as an excuse. You know, you talk about here, I, you know, due to my anxiety, I was unemployed for six years. No, you, a big part of what I'm going to try and get you to achieve here is self-empowerment, realizing that you made some choices 
And fair enough, you didn't know they were choices. You didn't know any better. It's, that's perfectly fine. We don't always make great choices. But you made a choice to be unemployed for six years. In fact, you made a series of choices. There were a million times you could have fixed the anxiety. You could have worked through. You could have reached out to someone else. And again, that's okay that you didn't. I was depressed for fucking nine years. I could have reached out to other people. I could have gone to counseling. I could have told my parents. I could have told counselors at my school. I could have told a whole lot of people. I chose not to do that. I didn't know any better at the time. So this isn't about blame. I was a depressed, you know, 14 year old. How was I going to know any better? But the way that you overcome this or the way you start working on your anxiety, the way you build yourself a better life is it has to start with like acceptance that you had some role in this, or at least that you have a role in the future in not continuing this, that right now you can draw a line in the sand and say, I will no longer continue to make myself suffer and remind myself of this thing that happened 17 years ago. I'm not going to play that game anymore. I'm not going to keep bringing that up in my own mind. Or if it comes up in my mind, which it probably will, because you've spent a habit of, you've built a habit of 17 years of thinking about this. When it does come up in my mind, I'm going to do some deep breathing. I'm going to work through it. I'm going to reach out to a counselor. I'm going to hit Andy up for coaching. Hey, I'm right here. You can hit me up for coaching if you want to. I'm going to join his forums or I'm going to join some sort of self-improvement forums and I'm going to start taking the actions that will pull me out of this anxiety. So again, this isn't about blame. This is about responsibility. You are responsible for the thoughts that you believe and the stories that you believe and the narratives that you believe. And you have spent the last 17 years believing a story that you're a victim. You've spent the last six, six years believing a story that due to my anxiety, I can't be employed. And what I want you to do is start analyzing that and say, is that true? Is there really no job that I could have worked? Well, fair enough. What, what's happened has happened. But is there no job that I could work right now, even though I have anxiety? Is it really true that I can't work through my anxiety? Is it really true that anxiety is a barrier to employment? And I'm not saying it's not difficult, but difficult and impossible are two different things. And from your post here, you have spent the last 17 years telling yourself that things are impossible, that you can't do them. They're utterly unfathomable for you instead of the truth, which is they're more difficult for me and difficult things can be overcome. So in terms of some actionable advice that I will give you, the very, very, very first thing that I want you to do is read a book called You Can't Afford the Luxury of a Negative Thought. Start with that book. Then I want you to read No More Mr. Nice Guy. Then I want you to read When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. Then I want you to read Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Then I want you to read Letting Go. Then I want you to read Loving What Is. And finally, I would like you to read I Need Your Love, Is That True? Start with those books. I think I, that's what, eight books. Read all of those in the next month. You could read all of those in the next month or two. Go through those and don't just read them, but actually participate in the exercises that they give you. But the point of these books is all of these are very like empowering books. These are books that will get you out of the victim mindset that you're in, where you're sort of sitting there saying this unfair thing happened to me and it's not fair. And, you know, why did this happen? And these books will get you to realize, especially books like Loving What Is, they will get you to realize, and Extreme Ownership as well, that's another book that will definitely help. They'll get you to realize, like, no matter what happened to me in the past, I have full control over my actions right now. I even have control over my thoughts. Now, you can't control what thoughts come into your head, but you can control what you do with them. And you have had thoughts that have come into your head for the last 17 years that you have just accepted as pure fact. You've said, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm a victim. And you've just believed that. You've just gone, yep, I'm a victim. You have believed, you know, this bully cast a shadow over my life. You've just believed that. Is that even true? Did the bully cast a shadow over your life for the last 17 years or did you? Again, the bully bullied you for a couple of years. Might even be less than that, but a couple of years. And you bullied yourself for 17. Who cast a bigger shadow over your life? The bully or you constantly bringing the bully up? And again, you didn't know any better. This isn't about blaming you. I'm not saying this is your fault. You know, boo-hoo, nobody cares. I care. I empathize. Please, trust me on that. But the only way that you're going to live any sort of masculine, even not even masculine, just self-empowered life is if you pull yourself out of this victim mentality that you've put yourself in and realize you had the ultimate hand in what happened to you. Maybe not at the time. 
when we're a child, to a, a large extent, we are a little bit helpless, or we can be, especially in school. School can be a glorified prison at the best of times. I was bullied in school. I have red hair. I'm a ginger. How much do you think gingers get bullied in school? Quite a lot. That contributed to my depression, for sure. But once you are out of the school system, you know, especially when you're in your 20s, and definitely by the time you're mid-20, and by the time you're 30, mate, you absolutely have control over what happens to you. You have control over the thoughts that are in your head. You are no longer a child, but you have been living the life of a child. You have been living in your childhood, literally, literally. You've transported yourself back to your childhood every day, and you're essentially saying, I'm still 15 years old, and this thing that this bully did to me, I'm going to hold on to. Your bully has essentially let go of it, if he even held on to it at all, literally apologizing to you, and you still haven't let go of it. Your bully has, and you haven't. Again, who's torturing you worse? You are the bu The bullies apologize. What more do you want? And you would say, that's not enough. And you kind of hin have hinted at that. You've said, I feel like if I beat up my bully, all of my insecurity will go away. So this guy has apologized to you for something that happened 17 years ago, which he didn't have to apologize for. Yes, it's not very nice that he bullied you. I don't like bullies more than anyone else. I've done videos on that. One of my best friends was bullied to the point where he tried to commit suicide. I don't like bullies. But... That's why I'm being so hard on you because this guy bullied you for a couple of years and you've bullied yourself without knowing it, but you've bullied yourself for the next 17. Who is the bigger bully? There's a reason I'm going so hard on you. You're the bully. Like wrap your fucking head around that. You're the bully, not this guy. This guy bullied you for a little bit and you bullied yourself for the next fucking 17 years. This guy's even apologized to you. Have you apologized to yourself? And that's another exercise you can do. Go look in the mirror. This is going to be very confronting. So be gentle with yourself. You know, it's okay if it takes a little bit of practice. It's okay if you don't get it right away, but go and look in the mirror and say, I'm sorry. Look at your, look into your own eyes in the mirror and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for torturing you for the last 17 years, or I'm sorry I tortured myself for the last 17 years. Say, I'm sorry. Whatever happens, if you start crying, that's fine. Let it all out, process it, work through it. But again, you have to understand that you've had a hand in this. This You're not the victim here. You were the victim at the time, maybe a little bit of a victim afterwards, but everything that's happened after that, you have engineered. Again, you didn't know that you were doing it. I hope I'm making that point clear. This isn't about blame. I'm going to say that for the thousandth time, but this is about empowerment. I can't empower you. You cannot empower yourself unless you admit that you had some hand in this or that you have a hand in stopping it. So you can even say up until this day, when I give you this fucking message, you can say, okay, I, everything that happened up to here, it's fine. I didn't know I was doing it. It's not my fault, but Andy has made it fucking clear. And hopefully you get this message that whatever happens to me after this point is my own doing. And so I'm not going to be a victim anymore. Fuck it. I'm not. Sign up for some sort of counseling, sign up for some sort of coaching, sign up for some sort of like, you know, self-improvement find someone who is who will sit down with you and counsel as i said i'm happy to there are plenty of counselors out there plenty of psychologists and all that sort of stuff talk to someone about this shit and say how do i work through this how do i become a self-empowered self-actualized person read the eight or so books that i just gave you as a suggestion start with those and i want to kind of go through a couple of the other things that you said here and just kind of react to them because i read it all out at once and i didn't react to each sort of line that you said so So yeah, so ever since then, so, so you know, after he, this guy bullied you and slapped you, I have anxiety and low self-esteem. I'm afraid of life because my bully cast a shadow over my life. I'm afraid of him even outside of high school. No, you're no longer afraid of him. This is a 15-year-old child that you are afraid of. He was 15 at the time. And you've told yourself this story of like, that was such a horrible event that I have so much fear and anxiety and all of that. And I felt so like, uh, so much like a victim and so disempowered and all of that. And I'm now scared of him, or I'm scared that he will bully me again. No, no. Like that was when you were 15. That was when you were 15. That's 17 years ago. More than half of your lifetime ago, you were bullied as a child. Again, I was very bullied. My best friend tried to commit suicide. I've talked about that in videos. I understand bullying. I don't like fucking bullying. Let's make that clear. But this happened to you when you were 15. You're not 18 or 19, in which case I would say like, sure, like I understand it's still fresh. This is something you have kept fresh and you have to understand you've taken an active role in that. You would have forgotten because time heals all wounds 
You would have forgotten this bullying thing if you had just let it go. And again, you didn't know how to let it go, so that's okay. But you have kept this fresh. The only reason this is fresh is because you have kept replaying it. And I have to make that clear because otherwise you're going to keep feeling like a victim. You're going to say, I didn't have any hand in this. This isn't my fault. I didn't want to keep thinking about it. You have to take charge, grab it and admit it and say, yeah, you know what? Yes, I did want to keep it fresh because it was such a traumatic experience. And I felt like if I could keep it fresh and I could keep remembering it, maybe that would keep me safe. Has that kept you safe up until this point? Are you safe? Do you feel safe because you've hung on to this memory? No. So at this point, it's time to admit, okay, maybe hanging onto the past isn't keeping me safe. I think I'm keeping my, myself safe. I think that the anxiety is keeping me safe and the fear is like keeping me protected, but it's not, it hasn't worked so far. 17 years later, I don't feel any better than when it happened. Maybe it's time to let go of this strategy. Maybe I want to stop living in the past and start living in the present. So I'll keep reading. I regret that one person had so much power over my life. No, no. So I, I got to call this out and this guy didn't have any power over your life. Do you have any idea how, okay, you won't have any idea, but I was bullied pretty fucking badly in high school. This, this badly, I was bullied this badly multiple times, many times for years. Again, gingers don't get a very good rap, at least not in high school. I absolutely fucking lutely would not have ever let any of those people those children, they were children, they weren't people. I would never, ever, ever let any of those children have such an impact over my life because I don't want them to win. And not that it's, life is all about winning and losing, but the one thing that you have as a so-called victim of bullying is this, your mind. And if you make it so that this is the one thing they can't take, if you say, no, you can fucking bully me, you can fight, you can hit me. I got punched up all the time. Not all the time, but I got punched up enough times. You can't take this. You can't make my mind break. You can't make me feel like a victim. Bully me all you fucking want, but you're not getting my mind. That is the one bit of power you have when you are being bullied, especially as a child. And again, as a child, maybe you didn't know that. Fair enough. You know, I'm not blaming you for that. But now as an adult, the one thing you have is to move on from this and say, no, I'm not going to let any bully control my life. I'm not going to let any one person have this much power over my life because that's a choice I get to make. I get to say who has power over my life. And I'm saying this guy doesn't get to have that power. But you have in this story said, you know, this one person had so much power over my life. He had no power over your life. You had all the power over your life. That guy bullied you for a couple of years. Again, I have to make this point. You bullied yourself for 17 years. You kept this memory fresh. You replayed it over and over in your mind. You probably said really fucking horrible stuff to yourself. You've said here, I am ashamed. People who are ashamed say really horrible shit about themselves. I'm sure you have said the most evil, fucked up, vile, horrible shit to yourself in your own head. I'm sure you've called yourself a piece of shit. I'm sure you've called yourself useless. I'm sure you've said the worst shit ever, worse than what the bully said. I'm sure you've said a million things worse than the bully. And that is the point that I'm getting to here. The bully bullied you for a little bit. You bullied yourself for a much longer time. And probably I'm going to assume, again, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm going to assume you said far more evil shit to yourself because that's what we do when we feel ashamed, right? When we feel, when we don't like ourselves, when we feel like we're a victim, especially when you feel like a victim, God, you say the most evil shit to yourself. You bully yourself. And so this one guy, this one person hasn't had power over your life. You have. You're the one that said evil shit. You're the one that said, man, I'm such a piece of shit. Why am I so weak? I'm a fucking coward. You know, I'm small. I'm weak. I'm pathetic. I don't stand up for myself. That's you bullying probably worse than anything he ever said and certainly for a longer period of time and as an adult where it has even more of an impact because it sounds like it's coming from a more rational place you trust your adult voice more than your childlike voice so it's you that have has had that power over yourself and anyone else listening you know anyone who's not this guy absolutely this is why i say don't hold on to the past don't sit there and be a victim of your childhood you are an adult now you're a man now or if you're a woman you're a woman now Stop hanging on to your childhood. That happened as a child. Now you're an adult. Are you going to keep living in made up fantasy childland that doesn't even exist anymore? And we do this thing where we play these stories over and over again as if they're happening in the present. You're fucking delusional. That's like literally delusion. 
It's insane. You are literally living in an insane world that doesn't exist. That ended. That bullying ended. Or those of you who hang on to other aspects of your childhood, your childhood is over and you're still living it as if it's present. We call that insane. If some guy was out, some homeless guy on the street is out there going like, you know, I live in fantasy land with marshmallows and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or like people who scream, like, you know, uh, people who are homeless and are like schizophrenic and they're screaming and they hear demons and, you know, they're living in a fantasy world. We call them insane. I would hope that you would use nicer language than that. I don't like the word insane, but we say they're delusional. They're literally living in a delusional made up world. They're, they're paranoid. They're not living in the real world. They're not interfacing with reality. That is exactly what you're doing if you're living in the past. If you're living in your childhood, you're living in somewhere that doesn't exist. You're not living in the real world. You are literally not interfacing with reality. You're delusional. You're paranoid. You're insane. Like, you're not living there with us. So, again, this one guy hasn't had power over your life. You have. And that applies to any of you who said who who say that you had a bad childhood or you were bullied or maybe, you know, you, you didn't have the best upbringing or your parents weren't loving or you didn't lose your virginity till you were like 30 or like whatever it is. When you live in that past, you're not in the present. You're not in reality. You're living up here in your fucking head. And that doesn't exist. The rest of us don't see that reality. You are the only one living in that reality. That's delusional. Guys, we call that delusional. Again, people will call that insane. They'll lock you up in a mental facility if you live in this made up fucking fantasy world and they find out. And that is exactly what you're doing when you hang on to your childhood. And so the answer is obviously to let go of it. Go and read any of you listening who find yourself in a similar situation to this guy. Go and read the books that I just recommended. Again, you can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. No More Mr. Nice Guy by Robert Glover. When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. I forget who wrote that. Eric something. Um, what other books did I say? Letting Go by David Hawkins. Uh, I Need Your Love, Is That True? by Byron Katie. Read these books and there's plenty more, but read those books. All of those books get you out of this sort of like victim mindset and get you to interface with the actual real world, the present, and come back down to reality instead of this made up, you know, old fantasy that happened fucking 17 years ago that probably didn't even happen the way you think it did we tend to embellish details and i'm not calling you a liar you know this guy i'm not calling you a liar but we tend to you've had 17 years to build this thing up into this big huge event and i bet if i could get in a time machine and go back in time with you it would just be like you're standing in a, a crowd and people are maybe looking at you and some guy slaps you and you cry a little bit and then you go home and i'd be like yeah you just got slapped though You've made, you've, you, over 17 years, you have told this story and built it up and made it this defining moment in your life. And the reason why you don't have a job and the reason why you're anxious and the reason why you're 32 and you're not happy and the reason you don't have power, you've made it all, you've tied it all up into that moment. And what I think, I, I don't think you're going to believe me when I say this. So I'll say it anyway. If, the, if you hadn't been bullied like this, there is a very good chance, and I can't know exactly, I don't have a time machine, I don't have a crystal ball, but there is a very good chance you would have just picked some other moment in your life and said, this is why I'm a victim. And so the point that I'm getting to is all of us have bad things that happened to us in our childhood. Again, I was suicidal for like nine fucking years, really fucking suicidal and depressed and obese and miserable, and I couldn't leave the house. And I've talked about all of this in my depression video. Go and watch it on my channel to search for depression. I could have attached to all of that. And for a while I did, sure. When I was in my early 20s, I did. I called myself a victim. But at some point I had to say, I'm doing this. I'm the one that's being negative. I'm the one that's believing the negative stories. Or if you want to be more charitable, I'm at least not the one who's fixing it. Like I could fix this and I'm choosing not to. I could at least start fixing this and I'm choosing not to. I could just read a book or go to a counselor. If I can't go to a counselor, fine. I could start reading a book and start healing this, or I could tell my parents, or I could tell someone else. And again, I respect you for reaching out and posting this. It's why I'm doing this video, because I understand. I understand the struggle. I understand the suffering. I could have just not done this video. I could have just said like, oh, too long, didn't read, can't be bothered, dude. I, I'm doing this video because I care, because I'm trying to show you that you're fucking worth it, even though you think that you're not. I'm 
you know, as hard as I might have been on, the, on you in this video, I'm fucking nicer to you than you are. I know you've been walking around for the last 17 years being a complete and utter fucking cunt to yourself. I know that you've been saying horrible fucking shit to yourself because that's what we do when we're ashamed. You've been fucking evil. You've been calling yourself a piece of shit and all that sort of stuff. A victim. I can't think of anything more evil that you could ever say to someone than you are a victim. It's why, and maybe I'll do a video on this at some point, it's why I just can't get behind certain philosophies like feminism and social justice and all that kind of stuff. Because essentially at the heart of it, their entire philosophy is telling other people you're a victim. It's why the Black Lives Matter shit just like cracks me the fuck up. It's like, so you're going to literally go around and tell a bunch of people that you supposedly care about that they're victims. What an evil fucking thing to say to someone. Because what does a victim mean? Victim means you're helpless. It means you can't fix it. You can't get out of that. You know, you're stuck in that station in life. You can't pull yourself out of it. You're a victim. It's not your fault. And therefore, it's not your responsibility. And therefore, there's no hope. You're stuck. The best you can hope for is that someone else will come along and fix it. Or life itself will, you know, magically just fix but you don't have a hand in that. You're just stuck. And good luck, it's a lottery whether or not you fix it. That's evil. And that's essentially what you've been telling yourself for 17 years. And the rest of you, any of you who are hanging on to your childhood, you've told yourself for, for all that time that however long it's been, that you're a victim. There's nothing more evil than that. It's fucking evil. This, it, why do you think I get so passionate when someone says to me, you know, I can't get laid because I'm short or bald guys can't get laid or you're essentially saying I'm a victim. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm stuck. My life sucks and it will never be any better. I get fired up with that stuff because the answer is no, you're not a victim. There is always something you can do. Don't sit there and make excuses. Don't believe your limiting beliefs. Challenge them. Say, is that true? Read the books that I've just given you. I've given you so much wisdom and so much gold in those seven books that I just recommended. Fuck, you could read one or two of them and they will change your life. Each single one of those books is life-changing. I've given you seven of them. And there's plenty more on my website, but there's seven books to change your life. Seven books to get you started. God, even Jordan Peterson's book, 10 Rules, um, for life. There you go. That's another one. There's eight books now. Go and read any of those books or all of those books. You're not a victim. None of you are a victim. I will never, ever, ever let you. I mean, you can do what you want, but I'm never going to sit by and let you let it go unchallenged when you guys say, or when people say, I'm a victim. I'm short. I'm this. I'm that. I was bullied. My childhood sucks. I'm depressed. This and that and the other. No. Man the fuck up. Or if you're a woman, woman the fuck up. Do something to change it. Stop being a victim because you are just being evil to yourself. You are being far worse than any bully, far worse than any bad boss or any toxic relationship or any rapist or any fucking abuser. You are being far worse when you replay that over and over again for years. You know, obviously after a, a traumatic event, you replay it for a little bit, fine, fine. But if you continue that cycle for years, you are replaying that trauma. You are keeping it fresh. You are keeping yourself stuck down. You are the one that has a foot, a boot, firmly on your own head, pushing you under the water going, gee whiz, I wonder why I'm drowning. You're doing it. You're making yourself drown. And then you're blaming it on some external thing. And fair enough, again, we don't know any better. We're innocent in this. You don't know this guy. You don't know that you were doing this. The rest of you who are hanging on to your childhood or hanging on to like, I'm short, I can't get laid or, you know, I'm fucking Asian, I can't make money. Whatever bullshit limiting beliefs you have, you don't know, you're not doing it intentionally, but you have to at some point snap out of it, wake up. That's what this video is for and realize that you are the instigator of your own fucking prison. You're the architect of your own prison. You're the fucking bully. You're not the victim. You are the perpetrator. You are continuing that cycle of abuse. You literally are. And this guy, mate, again, 17 years, you have abused yourself. Probably verbally, definitely in your own head. You have kept yourself down. You have told yourself that it's not your fault that this guy bullied you. So therefore, you don't deserve any better. That's what you've said. You've said, I don't deserve any better. I don't deserve a cool life. I don't deserve women to like me. I don't deserve a job. I don't deserve to feel good. I don't deserve to not have anxiety. I don't deserve to feel peace. I don't deserve to feel love. You probably don't have a lot of friends. I'm, I'm assuming there that, you know, that might be untrue. But you at least are sitting in a position where you don't feel good. And you're telling yourself, I don't deserve to feel good. You've done that. That's you. That's not the bully. 
You've just blamed the fucking bully, but you're the one that's done it. You have choked yourself out. You have put yourself in your own prison. You've stuck a boot on your own head and pushed you under yourself under the water. You've shoved your face down in the mud and you've said, oh, the bully's doing all this. Meanwhile, the bully is off having a fucking probably decent life, off doing a bunch of cool shit. We don't know anything about this guy, but you know, he's off doing whatever the fuck he's doing. You call him up one day and he's like, mate, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I, I didn't, I didn't mean to bully you, man. I'm really sorry because he's fucking gotten on with life. And you've sat there and you've blamed him. You probably told him on the phone too. I bet you said on the phone, you ruined my life. And he's like, I didn't fuck it. I just bullied you. I'm sorry, man. I didn't, I didn't mean to ruin your fucking life. He hasn't. He affected your life, but you're the one that's ruined it. And, and I hate that word. It's not ruined. You can fucking start turning it around now. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing this video for you. I'm doing this for you, by the way, not for me. So absolutely, you can pull your shit together. Absolutely, you can start now. Start with the books that I said. Reach out to a council. Reach out to me if you want me to kick your ass into gear. Join my forums. Just start hitting some other people up. Set some goals. If you don't have any goals, God, here's your first goal. I will read the seven or the eight books that Andy gave me. That's my first goal. Done. There you go. Start reading those and stop this cycle of abuse. You've perpetuated this cycle of abuse. You have abused yourself for 17 years. Again, Maybe I should put the headline. This guy abused himself for 17 years. Maybe that would be a more clickbait title than the one I'm currently thinking of, which is stop hanging on to your childhood. You're a man now. Maybe it should be this guy abused himself for 17 years, but whatever. I, I, want, a, I want a relatively nice title, even if it's not as clickbaity and it doesn't get as many views, but you have tortured yourself for 17 years. Yeah, maybe I should put that. This guy's tortured himself for 17 years. So, you know, I'll keep reading little bits and pieces. You say, I cannot turn back time. You wrote that twice. Yes, you cannot turn back time. So why are you living in it? You don't actually believe I cannot turn back time. You're full of shit when you say that. You you turn back time every single fucking second that you spend thinking about this event. That's you turning back time. So if you truly believe I cannot turn back time, embrace that and move on. And what moving on means, it doesn't mean you just suddenly stop thinking about this. I'm not saying that. But anytime it comes up, start working through it and saying, you know, do I want to be a victim or do I want to move forward? It means going out and reading the books I said. It means applying for work. It sounds like you are applying for work, but it means going to a counselor. It means reaching out to other people. It means setting some goals. I don't know where you're at physically, but if you're not exercising, absolutely, you need to start doing that. Um, I don't know where you're at with friends, but if you don't have many friends or don't have supportive friends, you need to start with that. On my website, I have guides on how to make friends. So go to killyourinnerloser.com, search for the word friends. I have guides on how to make friends. Search for gym. I have a couple of articles on how to go to the gym, how to lose weight, how to lift weights, all that kind of stuff. But you need to start setting some goals. You need to actually just start something, do something. Because it sounds like for 17 years, you have sat there and said, none of this is my fault. And none of this is my responsibility. And no, like, I can't do anything to change this. This happened to me and I'm cursed for life. My entire life is fucked because this guy bullied me. God damn it. If that was the barrier to entry, like if that was all it took to ruin someone's life, my life should be over. Everything you've seen me do, all the cool shit that I've done, all the videos I've done, everything I've done, everything I've achieved, I shouldn't have been able to do that, right? I was bullied just as bad as you, maybe worse. I would have given anything to just have been slapped one time outside. That would have been fucking cool. I got bullied way worse than that. And again, it's not a fucking competition. So you were probably bullied worse than this one event. This is just one bad event that you're talking about. But if, if all it took to ruin someone's life was a bit of bullying, mate, most of my clients would have had their life, their life would be over. They wouldn't have achieved anything they've done. This is such a, a, small thing that happened to you in the grand scheme of things and you are the one that has blown it up into epic proportions and told yourself oh my god there's this huge thing that happened to me when i was 15 i was bullied and it was so degrading and it was horrible maybe it was degrading maybe it was horrible but it's 17 years ago at some point life has to go on life or sorry time is a terrific healer, but only if you let it, not if you keep reopening the wound and you have spent every day reopening that wound. And the rest of you listening, if you're holding onto your childhood every time you bring it up, or if you're holding onto the fact that you're short, if you're a short dude, or you're bald, or whatever other limiting belief, every time you bring that up, or every time you believe that that's a, a valid reason for you not achieving your goals or not being happy, you're reopening that wound. You're reopening that wound. And it's funny that people will say, I'm bold, so women don't like bold guys. It's like, 
Women like bold guys plenty. You don't like bold guys. You are the one that is judgmental. Women aren't judgmental about bold guys. Some women don't like bold guys, sure. Some women love bold guys. You're the one that says bold guys don't deserve sex, not women. And those of you who say, oh, I'm short, so I can't ever have a, a relationship with a woman. Women aren't the one that hates short guys. You do. You're the one that said, I hate short guys so much that I don't think they even deserve to get laid. I don't think they even deserve a relationship. I think short guys suck so much that they should just be miserable and feel like victims and feel shit. Because it doesn't feel good being a victim, does it? And to this guy, does it feel good to hang on to the past from 15 years ago and feel like a victim? Does that feel good? No. Does that serve you? No. Are you glad that you've done that? Are you like, yeah, gee whiz, I'm glad that I hung on to something from 17 years ago. No. So it is time for a new strategy. And those of you who have limiting beliefs or who have hung on to the past, it's time for a new strategy. I'm not saying that you have to immediately just get over it. Although you can do that with letting go, with psychedelics, with counseling, with a bunch of different things, with the books that I've recommended. But at the very least, start challenging those thoughts and say, is it true that I'm a victim 17 years later? Is it absolutely true that not a single woman on the planet would ever like me if I'm short? Like start questioning these beliefs and stop accepting them as beliefs. Stop accepting them as truth, sorry. The person who knows more than you, me, who has achieved these things, you or me, me, who has coached at this point hundreds of people, hundreds of guys to achieve their goals? Me. Who's in a better position to say whether or not something is an actual excuse, like a, a, a valid reason, a barrier to entry? You or me? Me. So trust me when I say if you're short, that's not an excuse. It's not a valid reason. There are plenty of women that don't give a fuck about you being short. If you're bald, Jesus Christ, that's like the dumbest reason. I am fucking bald. If you're you know, ugly, that's a dumb fucking reason. If you're fat, that's a dumb fucking reason. If you had a shit childhood, that's a dumb fucking reason. If you were bullied, that's a dumb reason. They're all just excuses. They're all convenient ways that you get out of responsibility. You get out of actually having to face the fact that you, again, have done this to yourself. And again, that's not blaming you're innocent in this. We're all innocent in this until the moment that we're not. The moment you realize, the moment that someone tells you that, hey, you had a big hand in this bullying or you had a big hand in you telling yourself you're a victim. In that moment, we are no longer a victim. In that moment, we are no longer innocent. Everything we do after that, we are now doing with the full fucking knowledge that, yeah, this is on us. So, mate, listening, you, you listening, if you're going to, if you continue after this point, after this video, if you watch this whole video, and I would hope you'd watch it a couple of times and let my words sink in. But if you watch this video and then you continue to bully yourself and you continue to say like, oh, but I got an anxiety. So that's a reason why I can't, you know, get a job. If you continue that, you have to understand that you are now actively participating in your own suffering. In the past, fine, you didn't realize it. That's okay. It sounds like you are taking some steps to try and move out of it. You called the bully, sure. You went and tried to get a job, great, sure. It sounds like you're taking steps, but you have to fully fucking embrace that you are the master of your own destiny. You are the captain of your fate. It's up to you how the rest of your life goes. You can sort of draw a line in the sand and say, okay, everything that happened before, it's gone. It's done. Whether or not I could have changed it, doesn't matter. Everything going forward, it's now up to me. And I want to point one more thing out. You know, you calling the, vic the, the bully, I understand why you did that, but I would like you to read the book that I talked about before. Um, I Need Your Love, Is That True? So the book's called I Need Your Love, Is That True? by Byron Katie. And what you've essentially done with this bully is you've sort of reached out to him and said, I need you to make me feel better. I need you to apologize. Like, you're, you're, that's still a victim thing to do. That's still you saying, I can't move on from this. I can't feel better unless the bully, you know, makes reparations and throws himself at my feet and apologizes, which he fucking did. And you still don't feel better. What would you have done if the bully, like, you call him on the phone and he's like, ha, bro, are you serious? Like, I bullied you 17 years ago, you fucking pussy. Like, ha, I'll bully you again, bro. Where do you live? I'm going to come and call you a faggot, bro. You're such a fucking loser, bro. Oh my God, you, you, I hope you kill yourself, bro. I'm glad he didn't fucking do that. But what if he had done that? How would that have affected you? That would have fucked you up. You're already fucked up from something that happened 15 years ago. How much would it have made things worse if he bullied you again? Which he's probably not going to do because he's a 32-year-old man now. That's another point to make. You're essentially, you know, 
holding this guy to a standard from when he was 15. 15 year old children can be evil as shit. He's a 32 year old man now. He's moved on. You haven't. And again, what would you have done if he'd been horrible to you when you called him on the phone? You would have just, that would have taken you down fucking, you would have been in an even worse headspace than you are already. And so what you have done when you've reached out to him and said, gee, I hope he makes me feel better. You've given him all the power. You've given him all the control over your own emotional state, your own feelings. You've put your life in someone else's hands. That's not empowering. That's not stoic. That's not masculine. That's fuck. It's not even about masculinity because tell I would tell a woman not to do the same bloody thing. You've put all of your life in this guy's hands and said gee whiz I, ho I hope that he makes me feel better someone that you said bullied you really horribly you've you've essentially gone to a bully and said you're responsible for my happiness that could have gone really badly why would you do that why the fuck would you say to a bully hey hey i can you please be gentle with my feelings even though you but the last interaction we had you bullied me like fucking crazy and i've hung on to it for 17 years please be nice to me now you are so lucky. The universe is giving you such a nice fucking sign here that like, you know, this guy is so nice to you. Jesus Christ. Like you, you have no idea how lucky you are here. And yes, most people are nice, but this was not a very empowering thing to do. You have essentially, like I said, gone to someone else and said, Hey, my emotional state, the rest of my life or my happiness is in your hands. That's not empowering. What if that guy was having a bad day? What if that guy told you to go fuck yourself? What if that guy bullied you even more? What if that guy told you to kill yourself or something evil like that? What if this guy just laughed in your face and then hung up the phone and then blocked your phone number? What would you track him down and stalk him? You probably would have. And that's my point because you have put your happiness in his hands. You've said, my happiness is up to you, sir. Please be nice to me. No, don't do that with anyone. The only person who is responsible for your happiness is you and everybody else listening. Don't put your happiness in a woman's hands or if you're a woman, don't put your happiness in a man's hands. Don't say, I'll feel good if I get laid with 10 women this month. Like, don't say, I'll feel good if he texts me back. Don't say, I'll feel good if my boss recognizes me as a hard worker and gives me a promotion. No, because what happens if that doesn't happen? Where well, you are going to stick your happiness on the, the, the flip of a coin, the toss of a coin? And if this person gives you what they want, great, then you're happy. And if they don't, well, fuck, now I'm not happy. That's like a fucking ship of, why would you sail on that ship of fools? That's, that's the stupidest thing you've ever, you could ever do. So your happiness has to come from you and your own opinion of yourself. And if your opinion of yourself isn't good, read the seven or eight books that I recommended and start working on liking yourself. Start chasing down some hobbies, start chasing down some goals, start building yourself up. This is why I push self-improvement, but you cannot be sticking your happiness in the hands of another. That's such a risky endeavor and it will always go wrong. There's a beautiful Buddhist quote that I love called, or that goes, eventually everybody lets you down. And it's a Buddhist quote. It might not sound like a Buddhist quote. It might be like, oh, that's very like pessimistic. No, it's fucking beautiful. The whole point of this quote is if you stick your happiness in someone else's hands, or if you say someone else is responsible for my happiness, which is a, a big burden to put on other people, by the way, like fuck that. But if you put that burden on other people, they are eventually going to fuck it up. And how is it even their responsibility to make you happy in the first place? They don't know you. Even if they know you, they don't know you as deeply as you know yourself. It's, it's such a risk, someone else trying to make you happy. And so if you put your happiness in other people, or if you say other people are responsible, or even if you say, I won't be happy unless I, unless I re reach these goals, you know, if I don't reach this goal, I'm going to be miserable. It's like, that's such a fucking risky endeavor because eventually it goes wrong. Eventually someone lets you, everyone lets you down eventually. I've let down you guys a million times, I'm sure. I've let my girlfriend down. I've let my family down. She's let me down. You let you, that's what humans do. We let other people down. We're, we're not mind readers. We can't possibly know what everything else that everyone else would want. So eventually we're not going to do something that someone wants us to do. We're going to let them down. We're going to disappoint them. Of course, that's humanity. We are humans. We disappoint other people. That's how it goes. It's not, it's not right or wrong. It just is what is. And so if you call this bully up and say, gee whiz, I hope that I get a good reaction out of you. It might go okay this time, but there's a world in which it went fucking awfully and he made you feel worse. And then again, the power is completely out of your hands. You're now hopeless. You're a complete victim. You can't choose whether or not you're happy. It's entirely up to him and whether or not he's having a good day or if he's feeling kind. Maybe he feels like an asshole that day and he wants to tell you to go fuck yourself. He's let you down. 
So don't put your happiness in other people. Again, everyone listening, this applies to everything in life. This applies to friendships. It applies to sex and intimacy and relationships. This applies to your job. This applies to just everything. Don't stick your happiness on an external source. This is a very like stoic idea. Happiness has to come from within. So if you want more on this sort of philosophy, read anything from Marcus Aurelius, read anything from Epictetus, read anything from Seneca, any of the old school Stoic philosophers. So you can even just search for Stoic, S-T-O-I-C, Stoic quotes, and just search for some quotes and read and internalize them. But most of Stoic philosophy teaches you not to rely on other people for happiness because at some point they will let you down. They won't even mean to. Even if they're trying to please you, maybe they're just having a bad day one day and they can't give you everything you want and then you're let down and you're disappointed. So eventually everyone lets you down. Do not put your happiness on other people. Do not rely on other people for your happiness. Yes, have other people as friends. Yes, interact. People are lovely. People are great. All of that. Have people in your life. But don't say or don't tell yourself, if this person doesn't give me what I want, or if they don't have the reaction that I'm looking for, I'm going to be disappointed. No, that's just setting yourself up for disappointment. Another really good quote comes from Byron Katie. And I can't remember the exact quote, but it's essentially this. If you, if you rely on other people for happiness, you will always be disappointed. Like always, always, always. Eventually they will disappoint you. But if you rely on yourself for happiness, you can never be disappointed because you can never let yourself down. You will always know what you need. You know, maybe I need a, a, a chill day. Maybe I need to go sit on the beach. Maybe I need counseling. Maybe I need this. You always know what you need. And sometimes you might get it wrong, fine, but you always know roughly what you need and then you go out and pursue that. But someone else has to guess. And half the time they don't even know. I bet this guy didn't even know that you wanted him to have a good reaction. How could he know that? He doesn't fucking, he hasn't thought about you for 17 years probably. And so if it had gone wrong, it's not even his fault. That's your fault for relying on him. It's your fault for saying, I won't be happy unless he gives me the reaction I want. So don't rely on other people. You are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your own ship. As for the rest of what you've written here, I'm still afraid of confrontations with other men. Read the books that I've recommended. Probably five of those books are directly about confrontation. And by the way, you don't have to be, I don't even like the word confrontation. Like, that's just a label you've invented. Like, I bet what you would call a confrontation is you just being afraid of like normal human interaction. Because when you have these fears and these anxieties and you live in your own head and you worry about what might happen, you're not even actually living in the real world anymore. You're, you're sitting there going like, man, I hope this guy doesn't yell at me. I hope I don't piss this guy off. I hope this guy gives me what I want. You're not actually in the fucking interaction with the person. You're worrying about what might get said rather than what is actually said. How often do you get into confrontations with other men? I myself am someone that fucking hates confrontations. I'm not good in confrontations. I don't like them. They make me deeply uncomfortable. I feel nervous. I feel scared. I feel terrified. I don't do well in confrontations. But confrontations almost never happen because I don't sit there and live in fear of them. And if anyone ever isn't happy with me or they're pissed off, I just say like, oh, you know, I don't want you to be pissed off. Like, what can I do to fix it? I fix it. But you're sitting there living in fear of confrontation. And so the second anyone is even slightly not having the world's best day, you go, oh my God, it's a confrontation. And so my point here is if you're so afraid of confrontations, you will cause them or you'll be so afraid of them that you won't actually interact with other people because you're, you're terrified. So you're not even like having a good conf having a good conversation with people because you're so afraid that it will turn into a confrontation. Confrontations don't happen that often. They don't unless you're scared of them. And then sure. So you go on to say, I feel like I am not valuable enough. Read all the books that I recommended. I feel like I do not have a right to protest to the wrong they might be doing. Other people aren't doing wrong. You are doing wrong. I think I've made that pretty clear in this video, but other people for the most part don't do wrong to us. We do wrong to ourselves. And part of doing wrong means not leaving or walking away if you don't like something. You always have that power, but you've told yourself for 17 years that you don't have that power. You've told yourself for 17 years, I'm a victim. So yes, at this point, you probably don't know how to walk away from someone. So read the books that I recommended, <clears throat> especially when I say, no, I feel guilty and no more Mr. Nice Guy and Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Read all three of those books and then all the rest of the books. Those will teach you how to walk away. Those will teach you how to say no. That is just a skill that you can learn. The ability to say no is a skill that you can learn. It's not about confrontations. It's about boundaries. 
there, there won't even be a confrontation. If you walk away, there's no confrontations. Again, I don't have confrontations with people because I walk away. Like, why would I ever have a confrontation? So it's not about like being strong in a confrontation. It's just about walking away and saying, no, I don't really like this. I'm going to leave. You leave before it's even remotely a confrontation anyway. So I still feel I am not valuable enough um, and don't have the right to trust my instincts. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't trust your instincts. Your instincts have been so far to just bully yourself for 17 years. Those aren't good instincts. And so at this point, you have to teach yourself some better instincts. Start with all the books that I gave you. They will build a foundation of, you know, putting yourself first because that's what you haven't done for 17 years. So yes, your instincts right now could use some work and that's fine. You can just improve them. That's a skill that you can learn to have better instincts. I feel if I will go beat up my bully, all my insecurity will go away. You already know this, but no, it won't. You will actually feel worse if you beat up your bully because it won't solve your problem. And then you go, oh my fucking God, like why hasn't that solved my problem? Now there must be something else wrong. And that was kind of the point that I made before. I think that even if you hadn't been bullied as a 15 year old, you would have had something else happen to you because we all have bad things happen to us in life. That's kind of how life goes. You would have had something else happen and you would have attached to that and said, that is the reason why I'm unhappy. That is the reason I have anxiety. That is the reason that I haven't found work. The thing you probably don't realize, and you will realize this when you get some distance, when you start working on this and when you pull yourself away from your victim mentality, you'll realize that the anxiety was already there to begin with. And you have just found external events to attach to it. Maybe I'll do a video at this on this at some point that anxiety comes first or anxiety is already present. And then we just look for things in our life or external things to say, that's why I'm anxious. That's making me anxious. That person's making me anxious. I wouldn't be anxious if it wasn't for my boss. I wouldn't be anxious if it wasn't for that. So anxiety is already present. You already had anxiety. You didn't realize that. That's okay. Now you do know that you can start to work through it. But anxiety is already there. And we just tell ourselves, oh, it's because I was bullied. No, you had anxiety. You were already an anxious person. You already had a habit of anxiety. And you just, it, it's convenient to say, hey, it's because of the bully. So I would work on the anxiety. The books that I've given you will help. You can hit me up for coaching if you want or go to a counselor. Hell, you can even take, and I would only ever do this as a temporary solution. You can even take some anti-anxiety medications. Again, I would only ever do that temporarily. I don't really recommend medication for anxiety and depression and stuff like that. But hey, that's a conversation for you and someone you trust that isn't necessarily me. So, you know, make your own decisions there, but that's an option as well. But yeah, if you beat up your bully, your insecurity won't necessarily go away. So, I feel like we're going balls deep, ladies and gentlemen, 57 minutes. I appreciate you all staying with me. I'm surprised that I had that much to say for 57 minutes, but this is obviously something I'm pretty passionate about. People being victims of their own making essentially. And again, you didn't realize you were doing it. I hope that's clear. I hope anyone else listening doesn't feel that I was blaming you or that I was saying like, you know, it's, it's your guys' fault. Like, why are you doing this? But the way that you pull yourself out of this kind of like victim helpless feeling is by admitting that there is something you can do. It's not about blame. We're not here to blame anyone. It's not your fault. It's not the bully's fault. It's not, you know, someone else's fault. It's not women's fault. It's not men's fault. It's, it's not about blame, but it's about responsibility. It's about who has the power to change things. Other people are not going to come along and save you. They just won't. It doesn't work like that eventually everybody lets you down. Other people are never going to care about you anywhere near as much as you care about yourself. It's just not possible. Other people have their own lives going on. You're not that important. You're not the center of their universe. And so they will never be able to put you first. The only person on this entire planet who's coming to save you is you. You are the only person who's ever going to put yourself first. You're the only person who's ever going to have you be number one. You're the only person who's ever going to be your own highest priority. And you're the only person who's in control of your own life and knows what you want. Other people have to guess. And again, they'll eventually let you down, you know, reaching out to this bully and saying, can you please make me feel better? I understand why you did it. You probably thought that it was very helpful, but no, it was absolutely not because it was just refueling or fueling that sort of victim mentality and let me rely on other people and external things rather than my own internal happiness. And so again, if you don't know how to be internally happy, 
If you or anyone else listening doesn't know how to be happy by yourself, start with some goals. Start with the books that I recommended. Start with Jordan Peterson's 10 Rules for Life. That's a good book on taking some action and getting out there and actually doing things. Start going to the gym. If that's scary for you, start going for a walk every day, 15 minutes outside. Start making some friends. If that's scary, go onto my website and search for the How to Make Friends article. Start with that. It's very simple. If that's scary... God, just like start with some basics. Just start making your bed every single day and then going for a five minute walk. Boom, that's something. Do you know how much your anxiety would be, you know, improved if you just went outside every day for a half an hour walk and just looked at some trees and some flowers and said hello to the fucking birds and were grateful and, you know, looked up at the sun and said, man, I'm grateful that I get to be alive. And I didn't talk about that either, but that's a cheat code for you coming up with things that you're grateful for. So, you know, you... This guy who wrote this question and and anyone else as well, every day I want you to sit down and write down 10 things that you are grateful for. You probably have never done this in your entire fucking life. It's hard to be grateful for something when you tell yourself that you're suffering, but sit there and come up every day with 10 things you're grateful for. I do this every single night. I have not broken the streak in years at this point every night I come up with something I'm grateful for and then once a week I come up with an even bigger list but every night I come up with maybe five things that I'm grateful for and I tell myself and I meditate on them and I think about it and I smile and I feel good and I do that every day and that keeps me present and reminds me like hey life is okay even when I think it's not it's okay I have at least five things that I'm happy for five things that I'm grateful for and everyone has five things you're grateful for if you can't think of anything be grateful you're alive you could not be you could be dead. Be grateful there's a sun in the sky. There might not be. Be grateful that you have anyone on the planet that gives a fuck about you. And if you don't, hey, I give a fuck about you. So there's one person. Be grateful that we live in a, an era or a time where you can come onto YouTube and people will give you self-improvement advice and try and change your fucking life. Isn't that cool? Isn't that something to be grateful for? That someone or people give enough of a shit about you, complete fucking strangers, that they will try and improve your life. I'm here to try and improve your goddamn life. Isn't that worth being grateful for? And then, God, you want a fifth thing? Let's just come up with something cool. What's cool? Be grateful for electricity. How fucking cool is electricity? That I can just hit a switch, boom, lights are on. I can sit down in front of this camera and transmit my fucking thoughts to you most of you across the entire globe man how sweet is electricity how sweet is the internet so there's at least five things that you're grateful for i just gave you five you can probably come up with a hundred but come up with five or ten a day every single day do that as a habit i promise you that starts to make you feel better read the eight books that i gave you anybody else who's sitting there and feeling like you know i i can't break out of this like victim mindset or I can't help but feel like it's too late for me or it's too hard for me or I'm too old or I'm too this or you know I'm bold or I'm short or I'm this and you know whatever excuses you have I do understand I know that I was very hard in this video I promise you I do empathize I've been there myself I've had all sorts of limiting beliefs most of my clients come to me with limiting beliefs I am here to help I have coaching I will kick your ass into gear I'll leave a link in the description below please don't be too good for help I'm right here I will help you If you're really suffering and you feel like you're really, really, really suffering and money is an issue right now, if you email me and you say, hey, like money's an issue, can we work something out? I'm willing to negotiate on price. I'm willing to work with you. If you're, you know, really suffering and you're really depressed, I will work for cheaper than the prices that are on my website. You know, again, only if money's an issue, please don't take the piss and just say, can I just have a discount because I deserve it. But if you're genuinely in a bad spot, I'm not going to, you know, gateway my coaching based on financial situation and shit. So if money really is an issue and you're not just trying to be a tight ass, if money really is an issue and you're really depressed, you know, I have payment plans. I will work for a cheaper price. We can negotiate something. Reach out to me. Please don't sit there. You know, even this guy who read the question, you know, if you want to, you can hit me up for coaching. It sounds like you're unemployed. So, you know, maybe that's you know, out of your wheelhouse, but use my forums. There's plenty of free advice out there, but the rest of you, yeah, I'm here and I will negotiate, you know, hit me up. But the rest of you don't hang on to that childhood. Don't hang on to the limiting beliefs. You're better than that. It's time to be an adult. It's time to man up or woman up, move away from your childhood and stop being a damn victim. Yeah. Because it's just not empowering. It's not you. You guys are better than that. You're not victims nobody has to be a victim it's a story you tell yourself and at any point you can stop believing that story and you can tell yourself the story starting right now of how you're the empowered individual who's going to take charge of their life 
and be the captain of their fate, the master of their ship, that can be you. So start right today and then go out there and crush those goals.